Akshay Batia gets the W in San Antonio. This is his second career PJ Tour win. He won last summer in Tahoe. That's also going to earn him the final spot in this year's Masters. Now, if Akshay can somehow pull off a major, I think it will be safe to say he is the PJ Tour's next superstar. Now, the cool thing about it is he's 130 pounds and he bombs it. He's one of the best drivers on the PJ Tour. Let's break this swing down and find out what you can take away from it at home. Okay, so if you have watched any of our other analyses, uh, one of the things I always like to start with is, is looking at where the lead shoulder relationship is to the rest of the body. Okay, so you can see that uh, his lead shoulder is a little bit outside of his lead hip. A lot of the other players we've looked at this year, um, they've had their lead shoulder aligned directly over their lead hip. Okay, now what that's gonna do is that's gonna change the positioning of the spine. So we can maybe assume Akshay's spine might be a little bit more up and down. Uh, but if he was to set up with that lead shoulder a little bit more back, we would see a little bit more tilt in the spine. Uh, the reason I like to look at this is it gives me idea of how the rates of side bend to extension are gonna happen as a player moves into their backswing. Uh, now, the thing about Akshay is he looks really flexible, okay? So I know he's he's 130 pounds. He, he looks very wiry. Uh, so I, it doesn't look like he has many movement limitations. Uh, so he might be able to get away with this. But if you're an average golfer at home and you are struggling uh, to turn your shoulders, it might make sense to, to set up with a little bit more tilt. Now, what this is gonna do is this is going to um, have a direct relationship to his lead elbow, okay? So you can see that his lead elbow might point slightly off to the right of the target. Remember, he's he's a left-handed golfer. Um, versus like a Bryson DeChambeau, Bryson has that lead side cranked a little bit more. Uh, lead elbow is pointed pretty much directly at the target. Just understand that all those things are directly correlated. Now, one of the other interesting things we see is, is he sets up with the lead foot pretty flared. Okay, almost reminds me of a Ben Hogan. Um, there's some pros to that. There's also some cons to that. We'll talk more about that and look at how that moves as we progress through the swing. Now, with a stance a little bit more on the wider side of the spectrum, which I'm a fan of, okay, his swing and his setup reminds me a lot of uh, the Wyndham Clark analysis that we did. So be sure to check that out if you haven't watched that yet. But I do see a lot of similarities between Akshay's move and Wyndham's move. Uh, obviously, both young guns on the PJ Tour who, who are having a lot of success. So definitely things to take away from these swings. Uh, down the line view, one of the first things I always like to look at is, is the humerus. Okay, so if I draw a line down at 90 degrees, uh, from the shoulder joint, I like to see which side of that line the shoulders hang at. Okay, so you can see that Akshay's arms hang on the left side of that line. Uh, the reason I like that is it's going to give us more space between the hands and the pelvis at address. So what I've learned over the years is guys who rotate really well throughout the swing, they have space to actually move move through. Um, if, if you don't have space to move, the body's not going to go there. The body always takes the path of least resistance. So ultimately by establishing that space at address, I, I think that puts you at an advantage. Um, the rest is, is pretty good, pretty neutral. Um, lumbar spine, neutral. I like how the upper part of his back is a little bit more rounded. Okay. So that's important. As we move into extension in the backswing, we want to be a little bit more rounded at address to have room to go. And then, as I mentioned, the rest is, is just pretty normal. Knees are over the balls of the feet. Armpits are over the knees, give or take. Um, it maybe looks slightly like the, the handles uh, may be a little bit on the lower side. So if I draw a line through the shaft, uh, pretty much pointed at the belt buckle, give or take. Um, obviously, someone like a Bryson DeChambeau might set up with the hands a little bit higher. Um, last but not least, the grip. So kind of an interesting grip here. Uh, so if we focus in on this, uh, I would say the lead hand is fairly neutral. Um, his, his trail hand is covering most of it, so it's hard to, to see exactly. 
Um, but then his trail hand is actually very weak. So if we draw a line up from the V, you can see how much uh, that trail hand is covering that lead hand and that V points up at his, uh, what would be his right pack. So definitely a weak trail hand. It would be interesting to see how he navigates that grip and that club face throughout the rest of the swing. Okay, so off the ball, he has a slight body shift. Okay, very small, not um, big like a long drive guy. In my opinion, if you're playing normal golf, that's really all we have to see is just a slight body movement uh, to help us get our sequencing correct. Now, he makes a nice wide one piece takeaway. What we'll see here is, is the lead arm uh, is gonna be a little bit lower than the trail arm going back, okay? So uh, you can see that green line is, is a little bit higher than the yellow line. Ultimately, this is gonna be directly correlated to the rates he's tilting off the ball. Now, remember, at address, we talked about the relationship of this lead shoulder to that lead hip, okay? And because he's set up in a little early right side bend, what we're gonna see as a byproduct is we're gonna see his head move towards the target as he moves into his backswing, okay? And ultimately, because his shoulders are getting steep, that's why we see that trail arm sit much higher going back, okay? The byproduct from the down the line view is typically when we see this, the head's gonna stay a little bit more outside the hands going back, okay? So you can see at, at P2, club is well outside the hands. His shoulders do have more tilt as a byproduct, okay? So you can see they're working back a little bit more on the steeper side of the spectrum, okay? Now, as we move further in the backswing, um, he does a great job winding his body up, okay? So you can see uh, how early he gets his shoulders turned back to 90 degrees. So he's, he's making a big body turn here. Uh, and ultimately, by the time he reaches full range of motion, okay, uh, let's say roughly around there, okay, so massive shoulder turn, not a huge arm swing, okay, so so that's what we see from a lot of the guys on tour is they, they, they tend to create big turns with their body, not much independent arm run on with the arms. Uh, we will talk about the overlapping that he creates uh, through the transition here in a second, but I do wanna point out this lower body movement, okay? So obviously we talked about the little shift to the right. Now, what we see from the lower body action is if I draw lines down his legs, I want you to think about him almost holding this position as he turns back, okay? So he's creating stability through the lower body, okay? It's allowing him to wind his upper body up, okay? So we don't see that lead leg whipping back real quickly off the ball. This is one of the things that I was talking about with Wyndham Clark's swing that we noticed. Um, and the byproduct of this is if a golfer does that, we're gonna see this lead side work a little bit lower in the backswing, okay? So not only does he have uh, a little bit of a steeper shoulder turn going back. One of the things you'll see in the pelvis is at the top of his swing, okay, his pelvis is gonna be a little bit more on a steeper incline, okay? This is really important uh, to get our body to actually fall to the lead side through the transition. So a lot of golfers who have trouble getting to their lead side, typically they don't have these slants uh, in, their, in their swing, in the backswing. Okay, so if we look at how he manages this grip in this face moving back. Okay, you'll see that obviously his hands are, are really passive, not doing much with the hands or the wrist. And because the body is working back a little bit on the steeper side of the spectrum, you can see that the face is working back a little bit more in a hooded position at P2. As we continue him up to the top of the swing, his shaft is gonna work back a little bit on the steeper side of the spectrum, which I'm okay with because I think that sets him up to actually shallow the club in the downswing. If we see a golfer get to the top of the swing and that shaft is laid off, there's a good chance we're gonna see that shaft steepen at some point in the downswing, which is no bueno, uh, especially for speed. Now, as I continue to take him to the top with this face on view, okay, um, one of my favorite parts of his swing is 
He gets to a point where he completes his shoulder turn or his body turn in the back swing. Okay, roughly right about here. Okay, so you can see how big of a body turn he has. He starts the process of transferring to his lead side and changing direction. But what happens is his arms still continue to work back. Okay, so you can see the arms working back as he's changing direction. Okay, this is going to create a massive stretch from his lead hip all the way up to his trail shoulder. Okay, um, lead arm is getting pulled across the chest into what we call a deduction. Um, I know there's a lot of debate out there in the golf instruction world. Uh, should you leave the arm up? Should you pull the arm away from the chest? In my opinion, it's a little of both, right? You wanna see that arm load across the chest and create a stretch. And then eventually we wanna see that arm fire off the chest, very similar to uh, throwing a Frisbee. Uh, and I think Akshay is a really good example of, of what is the correct way, okay? So it loads across the chest and then eventually um, it, it does fire off. Now, I will say some players do get it off the chest a little bit earlier. Akshay is definitely one that, that it, it keeps on the chest a little bit longer, but I think partly because he has so much lower body rotation, okay? Um, you get him to P5, you can see how open his knees are at this position this early in a downswing, okay? So obviously getting that open, it's, it's gonna load that arm across the chest. Um, so his, his arm might fire off a little bit later than a, a Wyndham Clark, but ultimately what I love is he gets back down to impact with that shaft uh, in a straight line to his lead shoulder at low point. This is really important to being able to square that face up. Um, one of the other things, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, if you do get that sequencing of overlapping the backswing and a downswing correct, you should see the shaft actually shallow a little bit, okay? So you see how his, his shaft is laying back a little bit through the transition. Okay, um, that's gonna allow the club to, to drop right down the forearm, neutralize the swing direction. Ultimately, when we get him to impact, um, this is a really good position he's in, okay? Open hips, you can see both butt cheeks. The trail elbow has a lot of bend, okay? So a lot of bend in that trail elbow. We do see some, some lateral side bend in the spine, okay? Ultimately, this is purely a byproduct of how he changed direction and how he moved through the transition, okay? So I see a lot of people uh, chase this look at impact, but you have to understand that to get to this position at impact, you gotta move like Akshay through the transition. Now, last but not least, okay? I, I talked about Akshay's uh, foot flare at a dress, okay? So I've mentioned that his lead foot was flared a little bit more to my liking. Um, and one of the reasons I say that is sometimes if a golfer has that foot too flared, they might have a difficult time actually extending that leg by impact, okay? However, He's one of the few golfers that I've seen actually get away with this. Maybe it's because he's so flexible. Um, I don't know. Um, but ultimately, uh, most of the golfers I've looked at, if, if that foot's really flared, okay, a lot of times what happens is this knee will work around a little bit more excessively, okay, kind of like Akshay. But as I mentioned, he's, he's one of the few that actually gets away with being able to um, extend that lead leg, okay? Which um, ultimately I think is a key component not only to hitting bombs, but also a key component to hitting fairways as well. So I get asked a lot, can a golfer have too quick of a lower body to start a downswing? And in my opinion, I don't think that's the case. Um, however, I do think golfers can fire from the wrong position. And there's a lot of things that fall under that. Um, let's take Akshay, for example, someone that has a lot of flexibility. So as he changes direction and starts his lower body, 
Um, he's creating a lot of left lateral side bend uh, to start the downswing, okay? For those of you that don't know what left side bend is, is his spine is bending like this, give or take. Okay, you can see his the lead side of his rib cage moving towards the target. This is a great way to get the upper body stacked on top of the lower body. Okay, if you want to feel this at home, sit in a chair, go to the top of your swing, feel that lead side work towards the target. Okay. Now, so because he's moving into left side bend uh, excessively, it makes sense why he's setting up with a little bias towards right side bend at address. Okay, so that's a great way and a great example of creating a matchup. I get asked a lot, Josh, should I do this? Or Josh, I see Dustin Johnson uh, bowing his wrist. Should I do that? At the end of the day, um, that will work for some players, but for other players, it might not work. This is why we believe firmly in customizing your plan. If you're interested in getting your own customized swing plan, click the link below. Uh, space is very limited. Um, but ultimately, I'm a big fan of this kid. As you can tell, I, I like the move. I think he's um, fearless. He's not scared to win. He's already one on the web.com tour or Corn Ferry tour. He's 22 years old. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see him navigate the majors this year and into the following years. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave a comment below. I appreciate all the support. We'll see you next week.